Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and I'm here to do a review for Mana Forge from Mystic Tiger Games. And this game is really cool. It's a dice rolling game, and like it's a dice rolling resource management game, which is kind of interesting because usually when you think resources, you think farming and going off to a farm to see what kind of trouble you can get in and what kind of goods you can get. But in this one, you're rolling some dice, and there's it's really restricting, and I love that in a game. But I don't want to get too much into my final thoughts here. So, yeah, this is Mana Forge. Um, let's go check it out, and then I'll come back and we can talk about what I think about it. All right, so I'm here. We're going to take a look at Mana Forge. Um, I had this set up for one player just because it's big and it takes up a lot of camera space. But I think we can still get the point across, and I'll show you just a quick run through for one turn of the one player. Then I'll go over maybe some of the components and stuff. But okay, so to set up Mana Forge, first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna lay out this board right here. This is where all the cards go that you're gonna be able to buy. Um, and you're gonna set up this deck. There's a Dawn, a Noon, and a Dusk. Each of the sets of cards are gonna have 18 cards in them. So you're gonna remove the rest from the game. You're gonna put Dusk on the bottom, then Noon, then Dawn. At the beginning of each round, you're going to flip six cards. The game is going to end when all those cards are done, which is nine rounds. So this is a nine round game, and you're going to take one action on each round, so you're going to get nine actions over the course of the game. All right, so that's the overview, and here's how the rest of the setup goes. First player marker is denoted by this cool little anvil, which is pretty nice. Um, next thing you're going to do is you're going to do a card draft for player powers which they have backs that look like this, they're talents. Each player is gonna get four, you're gonna keep one, pass it, you're gonna keep another one, then whatever two you end with are the two that you're gonna have for the game. So in this case, I have a Pyromancer, which does some abilities with some fire dice, which I'll get into in a second, and I also have an Earth Enchanter, which gives me helps give me some tokens of the earthen variety. So again, we'll go into that in a few seconds here. Also, to set up for a player, the player gets one of each element of die. So there's earth, fire, wind, and water. Now, each die has their own color. So this is water. You can see it. It's blue. And it has special, like, water symbols on it. Fire, same. It has some fire symbols. But it has other elements on it as well. It just maybe gives you a little bit better probability in fire. Earth. Same thing, it has double earth, it has this cool little earth and token thing, which I can go into later. And then here's the wind, it has double tornadoes, so that's pretty slick. All right, and to go along with these four dice, you're also getting dice that are on the bottom of these cards. So in this case, I got this orange card, it's gonna give me another orange die or a fire die. And I also have this earth card, which is gonna give me another earth die. Sometimes they may give you no dice, sometimes they may give you a pink die, which is just a die that's a variety of elements. So you can see it gives you two options that you could use as mana on any turn, which is pretty cool. All right, so once you have everybody set up, you're ready to go, then you're gonna take your turn. So on your turn, you have a couple options. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna roll your dice. So you roll them, put them up here in your ready area. It's clearly labeled on the board. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then you can do a few things. You can buy one card on the board. You can spend up to four dice. You can use any number of cards in your workshop and you can use any of the talents that are applicable. So even if you can afford to buy more than one card, you can only buy one card. All right, so looking at these dice, I have a ton of earth and fire, some wind and some tokens. I was all supposed to start with some tokens. Let's check this out here. So I was supposed to start the game with some wild tokens, and I'll explain what the tokens do here in a little bit. All right, so I have some stuff I can use to buy cards. Buy cards, I'll just show you this one. Cards have a cost up here in the corner. So if you look at this one, this one has two fire, one wind, and one earth. That's the cost it would require me to buy this card. And there are two different kinds of cards. There are workshop cards, which is what this one is. It says it right there, workshop. If I buy this card, it goes into my workshop. 
As you can see, you can only have four workshop cards in your workshop at any time. So if you want to buy a fifth one, you have to discard one. And there are also store cards, which look like this. Same thing, they still have mana cost. This one costs two water and two of any other kind of mana. Now what stores do is they go into over here as like a one-time use, and then you're gonna get points based on this card, maybe some other cards in this. So in this case, I would get a point for this card, plus one more point for any other wand card that I have in there, just like some set collection deal to help you get points. Because you're gonna win the point, the game by whoever has the most points. So that's that. Um, the color of the card is kind of referencing the dice and abilities that it can give you, but not always. Okay, so let's say, just for the sake of getting things done and to show you some things, I'm going to buy, ooh, let's see, what can I buy? Yeah, I can go ahead and buy this one. So I'll buy this card. It's gonna cost me two fire, which if you look at this die, has two fire. So I move it over here to my spent. It's gonna cost me one wind, which I'm gonna overpay a little bit because I have two tornadoes. And then it's going to cost me one earth, which again, I'm overpaying. There's two earth. So I bought this card. As Soon as you buy a card, you now have access to the ability. What these cards do mostly is you can exhaust them to get the ability that's on the top. So in this case, I could exhaust it to get me an extra fire gem. Um, you can also upgrade them with tokens, which I'll show you how those work now. So I have, let's say, um, I'll use this one. So this one right here, you can see the, the hex outline. This means uh, I cast this in, I get to come over here, and I get to get an earthen, and I guess it's earthen, I don't wanna call it earthen, but an earth gem. Now, any die that you don't use, since you can only use four, you're gonna lose at the end of the round. But gems can carry over. So if I needed another earth gem later on, and I didn't roll any earth dice, I could cash this in, and I could use that to buy cards, activate some abilities, so on and so forth. But now that I didn't use these dice, they're done. I can only use four. Um, I also can use, I have a special ability over here that lets me use gems, so this one. I can cash in an earth gem and get a point, which is pretty cool. I mean, points are hard to come by early on in the game. It's not as powerful later, but early on it's tough. Um, and I can also, this one, let me flip one of my orange dice, the fire die, onto the gym side, which is gonna help me maybe not waste as many dice. And also, if you can't buy a card, you can take one of these gems, which are wilds. You can cash these in for any other mana that you need. So say I needed an earth and I didn't have earth, I could chuck that back over here, and then I could use it as an earth. So that's your turn. Um, it's gonna keep going around until everybody takes a turn. You're gonna get rid of all the cards that are left, you're gonna flip six more. So if a card isn't bought, it's gone forever. Um, let me show you, this has a pretty awesome little rules handout, so it's gonna be small and hard to read, but it has everything you can do on your turn, the order of the turns, the round phases. Yeah, no game in conditions, but that's okay. And then on here, it has the sides of every single dice, which I think is really handy. It shows you what everything does, because each die has a special power ability, except for the pink one. The pink one's just multiple mana sources. And it also shows you, you know, the just the basic symbols and I think the distribution. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also, I wanted to point out one more thing in this game. Well, a couple more things. The gym count is kind of uh, small. There's more than this. I just put these out here so we can have something to look at. So if, in case you're running low on gym, you also get these pretty cool cards, which say, hey, I have five wind gems or I have three wind gems. There's some of these for every gym type. There's fire. I'm not gonna show you the rest because they're all the same. And also this rule book is one of the best rule books I've ever seen. Look at this. Every symbol in the game is on the back of this. You don't have to flip to the inside of the book. You just look at the back of it and it's all laid out there. And also it has every card in text inside. It's hard to see, but you can see all the different types of stuff that the cards can do in here. And because each card has a number and it breaks down the card number in here. It's amazing. This is seriously one of the best rule books that I've ever seen. So kudos to 
the designer and the publisher for really knocking that out of the park. I know this is a quick overview. It didn't really go into a ton of it, but essentially you're rolling dice. You're using the dice to buy cards or take other actions, and you're trying to be the person that has the most points at the end of the game. So yeah, that's Manaforge. Let's go see what I think about it. All right, so that was Mana Forge. This game is awesome. Um, it was hard to see in the demo because again, I was just trying to give you a quick overview so you can see kind of some of the mechanisms and what's going on. But yeah, there's lots of dice rolling. Uh, there's lots of heavy decisions in to what kind of card you want to buy, how do you want to use your dice, what's the most efficient way to use your dice. Should I buy a card? Should I just get points? Oh, it's so good. I played it at three players three times. And I think I like three players a lot. Uh, I can see how two players would be pretty cool too because there's more options there. Um, there's going to be more cards that are left when it comes around to your turn maybe. Uh, but yeah, this is a great game. It's really fun. Uh, the rule book, again, I got to talk about that rule book. That rule book is phenomenal. Um, I haven't, I've been playing games for, I don't know, five, six years. And this rule book is probably the best rule book that I've ever seen in a game. And that's saying something because, I mean, there are some some games that have amazing rule books, but this one, it just lays out everything amazingly. It gives you great icons at the back of what everything does. And man, this is, I just can't say enough about it. The dice are really nice. They're chunky. They have, everything's engraved on them or engraved, I don't know. It's not like a sticker looking thing. It's actually like etched into the die. Um, the cards are good quality. They're shiny, which is kind of bad. It reflects some light, which you can see in the, the, review playthrough deal that I did but yeah this is a fun game um, I highly recommend it so if you're into it I think they sell it Mystic Tiger sells it on their website you may be able to find it on Amazon as well I don't know I didn't do my research on that but I'll pop something up on the screen as to where you can get this so yeah that's Mana Forge Mystic Tiger games so hey I'm excited and I hope Brian comes out with some more games thanks for listening see ya